Welcome back to another Tinkercad tutorial and today we're going to be focusing on how to make a personalized keychain. Now at the end of this video I'm going to show you two different ways that we can add text to personalize this keychain a little more. The first thing we're going to need to do is make sure that our grid or work plane is set up correctly. So we're going to go ahead and select edit grid at the bottom of the page. Once you select edit grid we're going to change our units from millimeters over to inches. Once we've switched over to inches go ahead and select update grid. The next step is going to be creating the base of our keychain. In order to do this, we're going to be bringing in that box. So go ahead and bring a box into your work plane and simply drop it somewhere in the center. The next step is to add the correct dimensions to this. We're going to go ahead and click that bottom right box and we're going to change the width of our box to three inches. We're going to leave the depth as one inch, but we are going to go ahead and click that top box and change the height to one fourth of an inch or 0.25. Once you have the correct dimensions, the next step is to duplicate our box. We're going to do that by selecting the box and hitting Control D on the keyboard, or you can go up to the top toolbar and select Duplicate and Repeat. Once you select that option, use the down arrow key on your keyboard to go ahead and bring that shape down. Now we're going to need to change that from a solid shape to a hole, so we're going to go over to our Properties window here and select Hole. We do need to change the properties of this just a little bit so that it fits nice and neat inside of that prism up at the top. We're going to go and click that bottom right box and change that 3 inches to 2 and 3 fourths or 2.75. We will also need to change the depth of our shape from 1 inch to 3 fourths or 0.75. And we're going to change the top or the height of this from 1 fourth of an inch down to 1 eighth, which would be 1 point, or 0.125. Now that we have the correct dimensions, the next step is to raise that off of the work plane just a little bit. So we're going to go ahead and grab that triangle and move it up so that it is reaching an eighth of an inch off of the work plane. Once you have that reaching an eighth of an inch off the work plane, the next step is to go and align these two shapes so that they are perfectly centered. We can do that by drawing a box around both shapes. Once we do that, you can go up to your Align tool and select the Align tool on the toolbar or hit L on the keyboard. Now we have our Align tools and we're going to do that by selecting the center dot on the bottom and we will also select the center dot on the left. What that's going to do is place them perfectly in the center with one another. The next step is we're going to go ahead and select both shapes again and add the group feature which is now going to cut out that center part for us. So now you can see we have a nice little inlay where we're going to add our text later on. Next we're going to go ahead and add another component here that's going to add an arc off to the side. So in order to do this we're going to go ahead and bring in our round roof. Once we bring in that round roof we're going to need to go ahead and rotate this shape around. We're going to go ahead and start by clicking on that bottom rotate and we're going to go ahead and type in that rotation of 270 degrees. Go ahead and select enter and that will rotate that around for you. We will also need to go ahead and rotate that shape using that top rotate and we're going to go ahead and select that and we'll rotate that around 90 degrees. Now that you have your shape rotated, be careful because if we look at the front you're going to notice that that shape is now protruding through the bottom of your work plane. You're going to want to grab that triangle and bring it up so that it is level with the work plane itself. Now that we have that, our next step is to make sure our dimensions are correct. If we click that bottom right box, you're going to notice that we have a half inch radius around that arc and it is one inch deep. We do need to change the overall height of this shape from one inch down to 0.25. Once we have them aligned up, we can use our align tool to help us get a little further. So we'll draw a box around the two, select your align tool, and from there what we're going to want to do is select this left center dot. Now we're going to use our arrow key here so we're going to click off of our shapes, click your round roof and use your right arrow key to bring that in until it is touching the rectangular prism. Now that you have the two touching one another the next step is going to be to add a hole to the center. So we're going to take a look at our top view here and what we're going to go ahead and do is basically bring in a cylinder that is a hole. So once we bring in that cylinder that's a hole, we're going to need to go ahead and change our dimensions from 1 inch to 1 fourth or 0.25. Don't worry about the height for this because it's going to be a hole feature. So in the end, 
we want that to go through the entire shape anyway. Now that we have those, we're going to use our shift key. By holding down the shift, we're going to make sure that the cylinder is selected as well as our arc or our round roof. Now we're going to want to align those two so we can get this nice and neat and right in the center. So we're going to use that top center. And then from there, we're going to go ahead and use my arrow key to go ahead and bring that all the way down. We're going to want to make sure we get that right in the middle. And once we do, we can go ahead and take a look at that from our home view. We can see what is going to happen. Once we group this, this hole should basically make a place for our keychain to go. So I'm going to go ahead and select the entire shape at this point, and we'll go back up and select group. Now this is a good time to go ahead and change the color of your keychain. Whatever you would like this to be is fine. I'm going to go ahead and select and change that from a red, and I'm going to change that over to a blue. So as you can see, if we look at that top view, we have a hole going right through. We can attach our keychain to that, and then we have our little tag coming off the corner. The next step is going to be is to add your text. So in order to add your text, we're going to go and find this text feature and go ahead and select text and place it somewhere on the work plane. Once you have that on the work plane, you're going to want to go ahead and add whatever you want your keychain to say. For this case, I'm going to go ahead and just type in my last name. Now that I have my keychain, I'm going to go ahead and select what I want my dimensions to be. I'm going to go ahead and change mine so that it is a width of two and a half inches. That should hopefully fit in there. And then we're going to go ahead and change my depth of this 2.5 inches. We will need to change the height of this as well. And we're going to try to keep this similar to our keychain. So I'm going to leave my height at an eighth of an inch or 0.125. Now that I have my name and it's ready to get added to my keychain, what I'm going to need to do is raise this up just a little bit. So I'm going to go to my front view. And I'm going to go ahead and click that arrow, and I'm going to want to bring that up an eighth of an inch so that it is flush with the top of the keychain. Once we have that flush, the next step is to go ahead and align these two together. So I'm going to go ahead and draw that box around the top of them. I'm going to select my align tool, and from here I want to make sure that we have this centered. Now when I go ahead and center this, I'm going to use that right dot, and that's going to perfectly place that right in the middle for me. If you need to move your name to the left or right a little bit, go ahead and select that, and you can simply adjust that using your arrow keys. Now that we have our name placed on our keychain, if we would like, we can go back and change the color, and now we have a two-tone keychain. Last thing I want to do is select both of them and go to my group option. Now notice when you go to your group option, your name is going to change back to that blue, but no worries, just click that color and add that as a multicolor. Now you have a name that is a different color than the actual keychain. Now if you would like to have your name cut out of the keychain rather than protruding through the top, we can simply go ahead and do a different move here that's going to help that to happen. So what we're going to need to do is make sure that we ungroup our text from our actual keychain. Now before I go ahead and do that, what I'm going to want to do is basically select the whole shape and then I'm going to look up here and select ungroup. Now that will only ungroup your last move, so now our text is separate from the keychain. That is important when going ahead and extruding this through the actual key tag itself. Now that we have ungrouped them, we can simply go ahead and highlight the entire shape. We're going to go up and duplicate that, and using our down arrow keys, we can move that back down to the bottom of the screen. Now I'm going to go back up to that top keychain and group that so that everything is aligned with one another and it is one part. And again, I'll click on that and change that back to multicolor. But for my bottom key tag, if I want this to extrude through the actual tag, this name needs to be separate from the actual tag itself. The reason for this is we're going to change that name. Instead of leaving it as a solid, we're going to flip that over to a hole. And then we're going to go back to that front view here, and we're going to take that name that we have, and we want to make sure that we use that triangle and bring that all the way down so that it is flush with our work plane. Now, if we go back to that home view, you'll see a little bit of a difference how that is actually part of the tag itself. Now, when we go back and basically group our bottom tag, what you're going to notice is we created a hole where our name was, and either way would work when 3D printing. But these are just two options that you can use in order to create a keychain using Tinkercad.